Crystal Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and today we are here we're going to be learning how to do this um, Easter placemat kind of interactive tutorial. Um, the way I just say it's interactive because um, it's got grass on it, the leaves that you can feel, the butterfly you can play with. Um, these are puffy. Just kind of fun for kids if they want to play with something. Um, you could also make um, other little rabbits um, and then you know just place them on here so the ki kids could play with them that's totally up to you um, it's just a way to make things interactive and fun when kids are at the dinner table or they just want to play and you can give them something to play with to keep their minds busy and occupied so anyways um, <clears throat> so let's get started the things we're gonna need today are a 4.25 millimeter hook um, a pair of scissors a darning needle and the 4.25 is um, a G it's a G so that's what we're using today um, my lighting is a little off it's a little dark in here I've been trying to make it a little brighter um, I usually do my videos during the day so um, sorry about that if the lighting is a little bit off been a little under the weather at our house coughing and hacking for like weeks now something that just won't go away so at any rate, also, um, this is a Barnet Puffy Yarn. You can use whatever colors you want for this, but this is Barnet. This is a teal, just a Red Heart White. Um, uh, this is Mainstays Green and Red Heart Yellow. I mean, it's just whatever colors you want to use for this. I just wanted to use yellow for the sun and green for the grass, but you could just do, like I said, whatever colors you wish. Now, if you... Um, haven't seen my video from before um, this is the feather stitch now I will be uploading this video later on YouTube I am on Facebook live right now so if you hear me talking to anyone that's why um, but um, in my last video I showed how to do this feather stitch and that is on Facebook but when I do download it later onto YouTube I will put the link um, on the end cards in the description um, so yeah, you'll be able to find it, but, um, I had even said in that video, if you wanted to go ahead and start working on this or the pillow, um, oh, my desk is a mess. Um, and that's my next video. So that's why it's like not even finished up there at the top. Um, because I want to show y'all how to, to make a pillow cover out of it and how to finish it off. So, um, but anyway, those are both using the feather stitch. So the way to do this is, is, um, Follow my video that you're going to see either on Facebook or YouTube for the feather stitch. And for this, you chain 50. Then you do four rows of green feather stitch. And then you do 12 rows of the yellow. Okay, if you want to do it just like I did. Um, or you could just do 17 rows of whatever color you want to do. But that's just what I did. Four of the green, 12 of the yellow. Um... Excuse me, 16. <laughs> I can't even do uh, first grade math. Uh, and I used to be a teacher. Okay, so anyways, um, yeah, 16. But you can really make it as big as you want. You could, you know, make this bigger. You could make it huge if you wanted to. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do then, since I've already showed you how to do the feather stitch and I've showed you the dimensions for this, um, I'm going to show you how to do the bunny today, how to do the eggs, how to do the flower, and the butterfly and then I'm going to show you how I put them on and then how I did the stems and the leaves okay so it will, shouldn't take too long but we're going to go ahead and get started the first thing that we're going to start with is the rabbit I'm going to leave this here that you can so you can see what we're working on I've got paint on my little uh, thing here my quilting board so I'm going to pull out some white hopefully you'll be able to see this okay with the lighting and uh, this project also is a great way to use um, any kind of little leftover yarns that you have um, as far as using different colors. Okay, so you're going to make a slip knot and you're going to chain two. And again, this is the rabbit. So you're going to chain two and then you're going to do 12 double, cro du double crochets in the second chain from the hook. And this is what I like to call a mock magic circle. 
So if you'd rather do a magic circle, you can. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so now you have your 12 double crochets, and so you're just going to take this and you're just going to tighten it just like you would do for a magic circle. Just pull it really tight, and then you're going to slip stitch into this first double crochet right here. Okay, just like that. And that's the middle there of your bunny. Now you're going to chain up three. And then in that same spot that you just slip stitched into, you're going to do another double crochet. And you're going to do two double crochets in each all the way around. For a count of 24. So there was our first two. Here's our second two, which leaves four. Five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten, eleven and twelve. and 14 so yeah just two double crochet all the way around make sure you have 24 but I'm gonna quit counting because I know y'all everyone knows how to count <laughs> Hope everyone's having a great Monday. Mondays are rough for some people. So I hope yours hasn't been too bad. Okay, so we're at our last two there. Okay, and that looks like you might should go into there. That's that uh, crazy... Uh, Think you should go into stitch but it's not because as you can see this comes right down into it so I know I don't need to go in there but another way of double checking is just to count and make sure that you have 24 okay and that lets you know that no I definitely need to don't need to go in there because I already have 24 if that helps at all and then I want you to slip stitch into the top of that first chain of three that we did okay <clears throat> Excuse me. And now to make the rabbit head, you're going to chain three. Then you're going to double crochet right into the back into that same spot. Then you're going to go to the next stitch and do two double crochet. And then you're going to go into the next one and do tr two treble crochets. So you're going to wrap your yarn around your hook twice. And if you don't know how to do a treble crochet, please watch my video. It's all about treble crochets. So you go through two, go through two, and go through two. And then you're going to do another one. 
So another treble, wrapping around your hook twice with your yarn, going into your stitch, pulling up, going through two, go through two, go through two. Okay? And that's your bunny head. Okay, so now we're going to make the ears. And to make the ears, you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to single crochet into the first chain, first available stitch right here. Not um, where you're, not the working space right there, but in the next one, you're going to do a single crochet. And then you're going to do half double crochets all the way down. So there's one, two, three, and four. Okay. And then you're going to slip stitch right back into the top right here of this treble crochet that we did. I'm going to go right through these two v these two stitches right here. You're going to see this when you're crocheting this. I want you to go right through there, pull through, and do a slip stitch. And that'll keep that bunny ear right there. Now I want you to chain six again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then I want you to do the same thing that you did before, single crochet in this ch second chain from the hook there. And then half double crochet all the way down. One, two, three, four, And then I want you to slip stitch right into that same space there that we slip stitched into before. Going right through there. And right through there. Finding our, our V stitch there and working a slip stitch. Okay? And there we've got our bunny ears. Now we're going to be working down the side of the bunny right here down the side of the head and the body because we're going to make a little tail. So right into this treble crochet that we worked before, we're going to put two slip stitches. So I'm going to go right into the side picking up wherever I can and just doing a slip stitch. I'm going to go right back down here and do a slip stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch right into the base of that treble where that treble came up from. I'm going to slip stitch right there. And then I'm going to slip stitch in each of the next six stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And in the sixth one right here, I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to put one single crochet. Then I'm going to put a half double crochet. Then I'm going to put a double crochet. Another half double crochet. And a single crochet. Okay, just like that to make the tail. Then to make sure that that sticks where it needs to go into the next stitch, I'm going to put a slip stitch. And then I'm done with my bunny. So then I'm going to leave enough yarn. If you're wanting to sew all these on, you need to make sure with each one of these that you need leave enough yarn to sew into your project. Also, if you're working with older children or you're just doing this for decorating for your home, you can also hot glue these on. But if these are for small children, I would suggest that you sew them on very well so that they do not come undone and they don't end up in someone's mouth. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> I've still got a cough. Okay, so now you're just going to pull through and tighten up. And now you've made your bunny. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how, oh, my mama's on here. Hi, mama. Um, 
so now I'm going to um, show you how to put on the little face and the little ears and um, it'll just take a minute um, but um, I'm gonna take some of this um, pink uh, yarn here and I'm going to put it onto a darning needle Then I'm going to make a slip knot at the end. Okay, so I've made a slip knot onto the end of that. Okay, so to make these little, um, you know, like pink on the inside of the ears, all I do is, is I take my darning needle and I just pull through and kind of like you're sewing, um, sewing a button or cross stitching, all very similar. But when I go back through, I'm going to go through this slip knot, and this will hold my yarn where it needs to go. Okay? So then I can pull that tight. Okay? So then I would go back in again. And like I said, just like you're sewing. I would just go up and just make the inside of the ear. And you know, you can be creative with this and do it however you want to. But that's just kind of what I did there is I just kind of go back and forth. Um, and if you want to give depth to it, you can go over it more than once. <clears throat> See, just like that. And then you would do the same for the other side. And then you would make sure to work in both of your ends when you're done. Okay? Now, for the nose, um, you would do the same thing. You would put a slip knot on the end after you've worked your yarn onto your sewing needle, your darning needle, needle, crochet needle, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so you do that. And then you put it um, right there on the tip for the nose. And then you go through just like you did for the ear. Just like that and then you just keep going around as many times as you want to to make the nose okay and then again you would sew in your ends to the back okay and then you would take your black yarn and you would just make a little eye right here you just thread your needle again do exactly what I just showed you for the other ones making your slip knot putting it in and then when you get done Make sure you leave this to sew on unless you plan on hot gluing and then work all these in. Now I do want to tell you because this is flat, when you go to work these in on the back, you need to make sure to stay on the top of your stitches so that it doesn't bleed through the front. Okay, So that means when you're working in your ends, you're only working through the top here and you may need to turn over to make sure that you're not coming through. But that's how you make that bunny, and it's really cute and really easy, fun to do. Okay, so let's move on, and the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to do the little flowers. So I've got this puffy Bernay yarn, and it's going to match the flower, um, the flower, uh, oh goodness, I can never remember words on here. <laughs> so insane, like I forgot how to speak. Um, bunting. That's not the right word. Anyways, the border, the flower border, it's on my fireplace. It's one of my videos, but this matches those flowers, okay? So, but you can use any yarn you want to, but a puffy yarn um, will work best for this, okay? So you're going to do a slip stitch and you're going to chain four, okay? And then yes, I'm still using this tiny um, needle. That's what worked best for me to do this with. Um, 
because I wanted my flowers to still be kind of small, so I didn't use a big one. So I'm still using the 4.25, which some people will think is crazy, but you can do it. It's a little hard to do, but you can do it. So then you're going to chain up three after you slip stitch um, that chain of four together. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to double crochet back into the middle of my circle. And then I'm going to single crochet. Okay, and that is my first petal for my flower. And we need five of those. So right after we do our single crochet, we're going to chain three again. One. two and three. Then you're going to double crochet right back into the middle of your circle. And then you're going to put a single crochet. Okay. And that's your other petal. Then you're going to chain three again. One, two, three. Then double crochet. Then single crochet and then do it again. So then you're going to chain three, double crochet, single crochet, and then that's four. And now once again, and it looks like you're not going to have any more room, you can pull this to the side if you need to, but it will work into here. So chain three again, double crochet and then your last single crochet right there into the middle okay and then all you have to do is leave off enough room to sew it on pull through and now you've made your little puff flower pull through on the back to give it some more definition okay and then you would work your end into the back. And that's how you make those flowers. Now I have three for my placemat and one bunny, but you can make as many as you want for your placemat. Okay, but that's a simple, easy flower to make. So let's see. Now I'm gonna show you how to make the butterfly. And to do the butterfly is just the way that you do a heart. So if you already know how to do a heart, and that yarn is too dark, I'm going to use this purple color that I have. It'll pick up well, maybe. <laughs> um, but if you know how to do a heart, then you know how to make this butterfly. So all I'm going to do is do a magic circle. For this, I have to do a magic circle. And if you don't know how to do this, please look at some of my videos. I have videos that show you how to do a magic circle. We're going to do a magic circle. I'm going to pull that, okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is chain four. One, two, three, and four. Then I'm going to do a treble into the middle of my magic circle. One, two. And then I'm going to do another one. And then I'm going to do another one. And so technically that counts as four, counting our first chain of three. Okay? Then I'm going to do four double crochets. One. two, three, and four. Four double crochets. Then I'm going to work another treble crochet. And then I'm going to mirror the other side, okay? So now I'm going to work four double crochets. Okay. 
So that's four double crochets. All into the middle of my magic circle. And now I'm going to tighten this up just a wee bit. And now I'm going to do four treble crochets. three and four okay so now we've basically made a heart and then we're going to pull it really tight our magic circle there and we're going to get gravy Hold on just a second. I'm trying to fix the lighting. I think it's just making it worse. Okay, so um, now you're going to slip, st slip stitch into the middle of their magic circle here, right down here in the middle. Okay, then you're going to cut off, leaving enough room to sew on. Just like that. Okay. And this is just a simple butterfly. Then you would work in the back of your magic circle here. And then I, what I did was I just took some white yarn. And I tied it after I worked in my ends there. took my white yarn here and I tied it in the middle of my butterfly or heart whatever just like this I tied it in the middle there and then I manipulated it with my fingers to look like a butterfly and I left some of this in the front hanging down a little bit and some in the back and then when I sewed it on I made sure to fold it in half like this and when you sew it on sew it on the back and it kind of leaves it kind of open like that as you can see on the placemat there okay so that's all I did to make that butterfly okay now moving on I'm going to show you how to make a egg okay and that is the last thing besides the grass that I need to show you how to make on this placemat so the first thing that I want you to do is do a slip knot and chain five one two three four and five then I want you to slip stitch the first chain from your hook Just like that and then chain three one two and three and then do a double crochet into the middle of your circle then do a treble crochet Then chain one and do another treble crochet and then after that you're going to work 11 double crochets in the middle of your circle so there's one two three and I'm working around my, um, piece, my piece of yarn left over here, but you want to make sure that you do leave some of it um, because you need to pull. Four, five, six, seven, I think I'm counting right. <laughs> eight, nine, and 11. 
Now looking at that right there, that definitely does not look like an egg, but it's because you're ending on the side of the egg. So I want you to pull tight on the back. Then I want you to slip stitch into the um, top of your chain of three. And then turn this way and that's your egg. Okay, so again, you would leave enough to sew in unless you plan on hot gluing. Still want to leave enough to work in though. Okay, so then once you work that in and the back end, that's your egg. Okay, and I ended up making a white, a pink that matches the egg, and then a teal that matches the butterfly. But again, you can use any colors that you want to. I did make three eggs, three flowers, one butterfly, and one butterfly and one rabbit. Okay. So there's how you do all of that. And what I'm gonna do real quick is show you how to put on the grass. Now I had mentioned in another video, but I'll let you know again. I found this at Walmart and I found it in the thread aisle. I thought that maybe it was only there for Christmas, but um, it actually was there the last time I was in Walmart, which was just a few days ago. So they do have it year round. And um, it just looks like grass to me. So what I did was is um, this is here where it's already put in. Um, but I just wanted to show you how I put this on. So what I do is, is I take um, right in between the yellow and the green is where I want this to go. And I'm going to put, put my hook right in the middle of that. And I'm going to bring in my grass yarn. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> And I'm going to do a um, single crochet there. And then I'm going to chain up three. And then I'm going to go into this next spot here. And I'm going to put a double crochet. And then I'm going to go into find my next spot in between these yellows that you see coming up. And I'm going to put a double crochet there. And then I'm going to go over here. And so you're just finding places in between where the yellow and the green meet to put your grass. Once you find a place that you want to put your grass, just keep it consistent. And if you do that, it will create a straight line. And even if it's not totally straight and perfect, it'll still look really good. Um, just as long as you kind of basically get the gist and try to go um, where you know you need to go throughout the whole line that's the most important thing hi Sammy how are you doing so you're just right between the yellow and the green basically you're finding a spot and you're gonna keep in that spot going all the way down okay and um, I had already done this one and so I just undid part of it just to show you how to do it okay so then you would just keep doing that all the way down until you get to the end and then you would cut off and you would work in your ends just like you would do um, for uh, anything else. Same with the grass. You just take this little end here that's all frilly, put it in a darning needle and thread it through. Okay? So that's how you put on the grass. And the way that I did the the only th other thing really to show you is how to do these um, flower stems. And all I did was, is I sewed my flower on where I wanted it to go, and I took my darning needle and my um, grassy yarn here, and the same thing I showed you. Oh, I'm so glad, Sammy, that's so awesome. Hi, Rita. So, <clears throat> you just, just like I showed you with a rabbit, you're going to thread your, um, your yarn on, your grass yarn. You're going to make a slip knot. And like I said, you can hot glue if you want. But if this is for little kids, it would be best to, best to sew. Okay. But this really, you would have to sew anyway, just because of the the way it needs to look. Okay, so let's say I had this sewed down here. So I would just simply take my um, my darning needle um, and then I would come up from right down here under the grass. And remember, I've got that slip knot in the back. So I would go over again. Okay. 
and then I would go through the back and find my slip knot and go right through that and then pull to make a knot, okay? And then when I turned it over, once you do that, it's gonna be hard to see, but you're just going to keep going just like this. Keeping a straight line going to where you have your flower placed. Uh-oh. Goodness. I'm sorry. Okay. So, as you can see, you would just keep going up. Going in and out with your sewing needle. Keeping a straight line. Just like that. Okay. Okay. And you might have to do it twice because this is a thinner yarn. Um, and then, like I said, this would just be on top of there. Okay. Now to do the leaf, again, it's just the same using the same grassy, um, uh, grassy leaf thing, um, thread, I mean. You would just go in, go around, just like this. And you can also use the green as a backing before you put this on. That's actually what I did for mine. I used the regular green and then put this on top so that it wouldn't take so much of this. But you see, I'm just kind of making a little leaf here going back and forth. Just making a little design out of my, my yarn here. And um, just like that. Um, but yeah, putting the green on the background really helps with this because this yarn is very um, thin. Um, hi, Sammy. Are you talking to me or to Rita? Okay, so um, that's really all that there is to this. It's just um, kind of putting your own creative spin on it. You know, you can make the leaves however you want to. You can use whatever colors you want to. You can, um, like I said before, to make it even more interactive, you can make extra little bunnies and little eggs. Um, you can make your grass higher. You could do another row of grass so that they look even more hidden. You could make extra eggs so the kids could put them under the grass. It's just a fun way. My kids aren't little anymore, um, but I, I think they would have really enjoyed this. So um, anyways. Just wanted to share this with you. Oh, thank you, Sammy. <laughs> I didn't know if you were talking to me or Rita. Oh, that's so sweet. She's making me some beaded stitch markers. Cool beans. I will surely use them in my videos. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. If anyone has any questions, again, I'm really sorry about the lighting in this video. I hope it turns out okay. I know it's a little bit dark, um, and when it's dark, it's hard for the camera to focus, um, but I've done the best I could. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Um, it was a lot of fun for me to make, and um, they're on my living room table, so um, they look really good with the border, bunting, whatever you want to call it, the flower border that I made, too, that matched these puffy things. So um, they actually look really pretty. But I would love to see whatever you come up with with these. Let me know. Um, and um, let me know how they turn out. Um, and if you let any kids play with them, I would love to know. Um, but I'm obsessed with rubbing on the grass myself. And I'm almost 40 years old. So <laughs> that just goes to show you. Um, you know. Anyway. Okay, well, thanks so much, guys, for watching. Our next video is going to be how to make this. Um, look at, don't look at the mess. Um, but my next video is going to be how to make this awesome um, lovey pillow, Easter Bunny lovey pillow. And it is using the same stitch, same stitch. Isn't it great? You can learn one awesome stitch and use it to make a bazillion things. Um, but it turned out to be a great stitch for a pillow. Um, and you can also, like I said in my other video, use it as a pillow cover. Um, if you don't have a lot of stuffing or you just want to, for the holidays, put it, put your pillows that are on your couch in it and then sew it up and then you could undo it later. So that's going to be my next video is how to make 
that um, Easter Bunny Lovey pillow and it's going to be using this feather stitch that we just used for the placemat. So, um, and my other upcoming videos, let me look at my board. I have a board on my messy desk. <laughs> um, so we did the feather stitch. We did the Easter placemat. So the next thing we're going to do is the Bunny Lovey pillow. Then I'm hoping to come up with some bunny overalls for our bunny. Then a piece granny square, cross puff stitch granny square. Those have been um, actual uh, requests from people who watch my videos. They're wanting to know those things, so I'm going to work those in when I can. So um, that's just what the upcoming videos are. And I'm going to put the lovey bunny back, <laughs> which I said earlier in the video, but for the people who are watching now, it's not finished up there because I'm, I am I want to show you how to finish it off if you want to use it for, um, because all I'm doing is stuffing a pillow in it, sewing it up, and then later I can undo that, or you can keep it, whatever you want to do. But thanks for watching, guys. Happy crocheting. Please like, share, subscribe, do all those wonderful things. If you're on Facebook, hit the, there's a notify me somewhere button, um, I'm not the greatest with technology, but, um, yeah, I think there is some kind of notify me something somewhere on Facebook and I know there's one on YouTube. So please do all that stuff and please like and share. It helps so much. And I thank you guys for your support and you have a great night. Bye-bye.